Welcome to another episode of Pizza Punk. My name is Pizza Jeff, and with me today I have Nick Aguilar uh, out of where, where are you located right now, Nick? Um, technically, a small town called San Pedro, California. Okay, um, so that, that's based in uh, Los Angeles, California. Yeah, my uh, my geography out there is to, to me, California is like a, a, a wonderland of so much mythology and lore and yada, 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 that I sort of, I hear all these names, I read about all these names in books and things, but I have no geography, I have no reference for them. So uh, yeah. thank you for qualifying uh, that. No problem. So um, so Nick is a musician. Uh, he's not just a musician, he is a, a avid, passionate music lover from what I've seen, from what I've seen on, on social media. This dude loves music. Um, he also books talent uh, at, 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 at clubs, right? You, you, you book talent at some clubs? Yeah, um, specifically one bar um, slash venue in Long Beach called uh, Alex's Bar. Uh, I've been like the assistant talent buyer there since like March of 2018. Um, technically, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, technically March of 2018, but obviously, you know, my – Work is very, very limited right now, uh, right. considering that the bar has been shut down, opened again, and then shut down again, then opened again, and then finally shut down again. Uh, and it's just, I don't know, man. It's, yeah. But I uh, i hope to get back to it soon. Yeah, dude, it's its crazy out there. That was going to be one of my things that we spoke about. We'll, we'll get to that eventually, but yeah. It's, oh, yeah, we totally it's, it's, it's so crazy, man. It, it's it really is this. That's been an ongoing conversation on the show for sure with all my musical guests. Primarily, we do mu some are music and some are like film director people. Uh, we had mm -hmm. the uh, James from SLC Punk was on the show. That was so fun. Oh, that's awesome. That yeah, that's he's a awesome. great guy. Great guy. Great, great to talk to him about that movie. I love that movie. Um, so, uh, so you play the drums. Do you play any other instruments besides the drums? No, nah, man. Unfortunately, that is my forte and my only. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, I mean, I think it's just because I've gotten, I've just, uh, I've established myself as such, and uh, I'm really busy with other things in my in my own life where, like, I just really haven't given myself the time to sit down and learn another instrument. I fuck around every once in a while with uh, my bass that I have sitting right here next to me. It's oh, nice. Just, yeah, it's like a, uh, it's a, it's a Thunderbird. Um, that well, they gotta show, you gotta show me what it looks like. I don't okay. know what that is. You gotta show me the thunder. Come on. <laughs> All right, I know, I know, I know. Hold on. One second. Yeah, here it is. Oh, yes. That shape. Yeah, yeah, that is awesome. I recognize bases by their shapes. I only know a Rickenbacker. Rickenbacker base is to me. I mean, like a quintessential. It's a pretty iconic shape. It has a pretty Hoffman. iconic shape to it. But yeah, Hoffman I mean, base. if anything, yeah, I've been playing drums since I was like 10. Um, and wow. that's like pretty much the only thing that I've really, uh, put my entire, uh, life into for the most part. And, uh, I think just because like drummers are so in demand, like I'm technically find myself playing with a lot of different people and like, hard to find a good drummer, man. Yeah. I mean, it's true. And I, and I, I mean that in the most humble way possible, you yeah. know, like, totally. you know, first of all, like, you know, it's like, everybody and their mother plays guitar. There's a bunch of people who fiddle around and play bass. And then there's, it's really hard to find a singer, of course, like, you know, and then, then there's finding the drummer and the right. drummer is like, you know, once Back you finally up. find, yeah, it's like, once Back you finally find, yeah. Once you finally find someone who plays drums, you're like, hell yeah. And then once you find, finally find someone that plays drums who happens to be fucking good, then right. you're like, okay, like we don't want to let this guy go. Right. Like, you can you know, <laughs> and I, I, I know, and I know, and I've been, I've been in that situation before and it's uncomfortable, you know, whenever you have to, you know, leave a project or quit a project and right. I mean, you know how it is or do you, I don't know. I don't, I'm a, so I'm, I, I would consider myself musician adjacent in that I'm, I'm in the video world in the, you know, filmmaking world, but I, in the indie horror scene, I guess that's where I would put myself, but yeah. I do have some crossover. I used to, I've worked with lots of bands and, and punk rockers and things on the East coast. I did tour with a band. I toured with this band Blitz kid once. That's like mm -hmm. my one time I had the, the full tour experience. We went from 
We went all the way out to California and back, oh, right. and then we went to uh, we went from Moscow to England and all over Europe and stuff. So it was like this wow. big, big, long, and I like shot footage the whole time, and it was it was some experience to be like a videographer. I taped the show every night, both with video and audio, and it was uh, it was for this horror punk band called Blitz Kid, and um, it's really awesome, uh, man. Yeah, dude, it was a lot of fun, but uh, I do. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Moscow was a trip, man. Moscow was a trip. Um, but it's like, it's the, it's a very interesting sort of, so I consider myself musician adjacent, but not. Yeah. Yeah. To answer you. Love, well, dude, you obviously have a huge passion for, uh, for a I lot of music. things and uh, yeah, you yeah. know, music is obviously one of them. See with me, dude, like that's kind of my only passion. In fact, I even like to joke about that. It's like my only personality trait. You know, anything that's like relating to music or anything. And I know that's not necessarily. You like true. movies though? You got to like movies. You know, that's the thing, man. Like I like movies. Do I find yeah. myself like, I'm definitely not a movie nerd. There are so many fucking movies that I uh, have not s taken the time to sit down and watch. And a lot of that has to be yes. a very, very, very. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm sure I'll get to that point. I'm just a manic motherfucker. Yeah. And, like, it's so hard for me to, like, just sit down and, like, give myself the time to, like, okay, I am going to dedicate uh, a half hour to anywhere between, you know, a half hour to four hours of, you know, cinema or some documentary or something. And as right. much as I enjoy those things, when I finally, you know, take the time to sit down and enjoy it, I'm, like, Sometimes I just find myself like, oh, well, there's this on my mind and I got to take care of that. And, you know, I'd rather be listening to this album that I've been meaning to listen to or like, you know, like Henry like that. Rollins with that. You know how Henry Rollins like talks about how he just like he has this big, beautiful sound system. and He just sits in front of it and just listens to music. Yeah. See, That's like good. I wish I could be that Zen about it. A lot of the time it's kind of like that is the right word. Yeah. You know, he's like he's fucking. <laughs> You know, he's he's paid his dues where he could fucking, you know, you know, he could be his yeah, nice he could be his nice little Henry Rollins and you know, like mm, nothing but music for three hours. You know, me, yeah. it's like I gotta be, you know, at work throwing on a record or like yeah. you know, doing something at home and having his background noise, but then every once in a while, you know, like something like really draws you in and then that's how you know some of my favorite records become some of my favorite records um you um yeah. what about what about biopics like band biopics or like uh movies about music does that is that so is that like a hook for you at all or is it um just it depends i kind of find biopics like now see this this is how much i don't know shit about movies a biopic is like where actors play like yeah. a band and shit right well i don't yeah, know it's usually, it's usually paint by numbers like very formulaic like the elton john biopic okay and i heard that was pretty running. good i heard that was pretty good i never took the time to queen watch one. it okay I, all one. right yeah like here's the thing i saw bohemian rhapsody i neither hated it nor loved it i just thought it was like okay this was very safe like it did. there's no penis I'll, man there's no I penis know, i know i mean if we're being honest here there's no penis in this film i and wanted to food, see dick <laughs> you think that this dude who's like the most prolifically like just like banged everything that there is to bang and it's a story of his life there's not a single peen no as a matter no. of fact he's in bed with women and you're just like i know it's like bro no no but yeah i thought the message you. was so negative man of that I'm, movie like about like the the dangers of, of of homosexuality you know like you know it just i thought it was yeah i don't know yeah i mean I don't know. I think it's just because people like already knew and maybe they didn't want to like, uh, you know, I mean, it was a commercial. They couldn't make money if they had too much peen in it. That's the problem. That's, that's definitely true. Uh, oh, I'll tell you know. what, that movie did make me, uh, appreciate queen as a band more like, Oh yeah. Just to like, I really, like, it, I kind of like wrote them off, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, uh, I fucking, I think a lot of it had to do with, you know, hearing, a hearing Bohemian Rhapsody at my works karaoke night every Tuesday, like, yeah. Pop and, then, uh, in and then dude, even <laughs> after that movie came out, Oh my God, it just got 10 it got crazy. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I don't know. I think Queen's a great band. They got some fucking, they got some dude, they're geniuses, man. They're genius. Especially yeah. if you appreciate, see, this is like really weird. I'm a guy who doesn't play a single instrument, but, and I don't like sports. I don't watch sports, but I, will sit and watch a documentary about the making of Bat Out of Hell 
and watch, ah, watch yeah, it from beginning to end. I just love learning about music production. Well, quick and question. Genius geniuses. Yeah, go ahead. Isn't there a Meat Love biopic? Um, I think there's a made for TV film. I'm a yeah. Big, I, I love Meatloaf, by the way. That first out, that bet out of hell album. Yeah, that's like, fucking great. I have oh, it. Like, I don't care if so people good. think that shit is corny. I mean, like, it's not corny, dude. It's amazing. It's, yeah, not bad, I don't know. it's amazing. Yeah. I love it. There are some parts where I'm like, oh my god, this is ridiculous. But like, it rocks. You that's know, it rocks. It's supposed to be. I know. Ridiculous. No, you know? I know. That's the thing, man. Like. You know, people, you know, don't get me wrong. I listen to shit that's like, yo, like cool guy stuff. Like, yo, how the fuck does this guy listen to this stuff? But then there's stuff that I like that are like, yo. Yeah, give, me a, like, give me an example. Give me an example. Like, I don't know. Like, just like some obscure, like fucking, like, I don't know. Just like <laughs> spiritual jazz or like, you know, something. Sun, that, you know, like, Sun Ra? Yeah, like Sun Ra or like Pharaoh Sanders or shit like that. And like. I got to see Sun Ra live open up for DKT, the M M MC5 DKT, when they reunited in 2005 for free in Central Park. And it was face melting. That's face insane. Melting. That's yeah. insane, dude. It was but insane, like, dude. But then, like, I'll shamelessly listen to, like, the fucking Kings of Leon or, like, Red Hot Chili Peppers or, like, you know, or Sublime for that fact. And bands, bands like that get a bad rep. But, like, I don't care because, like, I think those bands have really good fucking songs. Like, I'm a sucker for exactly, a band. Dude. I'm a sucker for a catchy tune, whether if it may be corny or not. And, like, fucking bands, like, those three I just named, like, I think I even tweeted a few months ago, like, those are three bands that I will fucking, like, defend to the grave. Are Is all their material good? No. But, like, do they have, a pro, like, a prolific output and, like, lots of fucking great jams? Like, like Sublime, for example, dude. Like, sure, they influenced a lot of bands that I personally don't fuck with at all, but, like... The, but the thing is about Sublime is like, you know, I was having this conversation the other day with my friend Dennis, who DJs. Sublime yeah. were really, 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 they were huge music fans. And you could tell the music. No, like they listened huge. to fucking shit straight from Jamaica. They listened to fucking punk rock that was happening in their backyard. They were listening to fucking really, you know, classic rock bands. Like those guys were really good music fans, and they, which made them write really good songs. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I was talking. Do you know? Do you know Miguel Apple does? Um. So, all right. So, to preface this, I actually was wanted to discuss all this stuff way later in the game. In the in yeah, this I know. Conversation, I know. I don't know how you got there. I no, it's okay. I'm gl I'm glad because I like talking about the stuff, but I didn't want to like I didn't want to go there if we didn't have to go there. But like, I, I'm a I am a ginorm. Obviously, I'm a ginormous Sublime fan. And the, here's my here's my take on it. Here's my personal take on it. And it's super weird to be a sublime fan on the East coast too. Just for, just to put that out there. I'm well, in New York. Where the, okay. You're in New York. Okay. Yeah. I'm in, I'm in New York, right above New York city. And I grew up, I, 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 I grew up on sublime, you know, and uh, they are one of my all time favorite bands. However, I'm almost, I hate to say this. I'm almost embarrassed uh, by today. Not that I, not that I, not by listening to them, but, the f I find a lot of the fans to be embarrassing. Oh, dude, it's and true. It's true. The fan base is pretty terrible. <laughs> it's just and 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 here's the thing, and this is very interesting, and this is what I wanted to talk to you about eventually. But let's just talk about it now since we're here. I don't give a What's fuck. What's interesting dude. is guns blazing. Sublime. I'm sorry. Guns blazing. I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Guns blazing. So what's interesting <laughs> is, uh, and yes, of course I know who Miguel is. Miguel is like, like. I, He's a friggin' brilliant genius. I want to ask you all about like how that all went. I mean, because I, you know, I remember, I remember. Well, hold on, hold on. Before we get there, <laughs> <laughs> damn it, I was trying not to go. Okay, so I don't care, all, man. That's all good. First of all, um, on the East Coast, we have the Misfits, right? Yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. The Misfits have the same legendary mythology cult following that Sublime has on the West coast. And then what happens is you literally have genres of music that can literally be traced back to like one band. That's not to say that, as you just said, sublime, you know, sublime is like, you know, they're doing like the rhythm thing, like the rhythm thing where like yeah, you take yeah, the yeah. very common rhythm. It's the root, the root yeah. rhythm. Yeah. And then you, you expand and you do songs. So sublime is actually like this beautiful melting pot of all these things. And as you said, like like uh, voracious music listeners and blending all these incredible genres together. 
the um but the the thing that came out of sublime is it's just it's just like the same cookie cutter like one note band it's embarrassing man it is like, embarrassing it's embarrassing dude like i said it's they off. copied they copied a shit ton of good artists yeah and then a bunch of artists who came after sublime just copied sublime so right. it's just like it didn't it didn't right. work out right. these motherfuckers you know it's like you know sublime were bumping you know fucking johnny osborne and like right. you know bad religion and like you know really good jamaican singers and really good punk rock bands and you know and just like I don't know. It it is what it is. I I mean I'm not afraid to say it, dude. Like I I think they're great, and uh, you know if it wasn't for Sublime, I wouldn't know a lot of my favorite bands. To oh be yeah, they turned me on to the bad brains, dude. I mean yeah. I I learned about so many bands through Sublime. And what's interesting is on the East Coast you have the Misfits. So the Misfits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about that. You have you have literally it's li it's and that's why I think it's so funny because I'm in. Facebook groups for both. As a matter of fact, I'm a ginormous Misfits nerd. That's to do a whole podcast about the Misfits. I know oh, awesome. a lot of the players in the Misfits. I know, you know, just whatever. I, 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 I've I been very involved in that world. And what's interesting yeah. is... Well, they're from, um, a, what, is it Lodi? Lodi. Lodi, 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 which yeah, is about see, 20, know, minutes, yeah. 20 minutes from here. Oh, and, okay. uh, it, yeah, it's a magical place, man. I used to do... That's where we did the rock and roll cooking show was in Lodi. Oh, okay, so, cool. Yeah. It was on that side. And so what's interesting, though, is you have and, – and since then, I have come to appreciate a lot of the bands that came after the Misfits in sense like, you know, I toured with – Blitzkid is one of the biggest, you know, disciples of that, ba of that band. Yeah. You know, there's all these bands that just sort of came out, but there's so many – like uh derivative cookie cutter uh and i was for uh, a long time uh, yeah that like, doesn't sound it's, it's good one note. it's one yeah. note, dude it's like it's like it's like the misfits you don't need anything else besides yeah the that's it right that doesn't sound good i feel like you know horror punk in general doesn't really sound good but like the, i don't know the way the misfits did it you gotta listen to the right like, stuff dude you gotta check out i'm gonna turn you on to nimvind you gotta check out nimvind there are some really great bands that come from that family tree that are awesome but you just gotta you just gotta know where you know hour of the wolf out in uh arizona no i never heard they're they're broken up now but it's like the it's the place where earth ad misfits meets black flag with uh james williamson dead boy guitar playing all at the that, same time that actually that sounds really rad that's it really is bad. it yeah. is it's it's you know the 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 vocals are very throaty but it's melodic and I'm gonna write uh, that down what are they called I'll, I'll send it to you it's hour right. of the wolf hour of the wolf, of but the I'll, wolf. I'll, I'll 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 send you uh cool. my I, you have to you have to listen to power of the wolf is the first ep All right. All right. calabrese is fun i don't know if you know calabrese they're on the 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 west coast too um, i mean would, would afi count as that no no, 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 no. not, not even like adjacent, but no, no. Yeah, no. okay. Now, okay. now, Davey Havoc from AFI, he was in a band with Steve Zing from Sam Hain, and they. Oh did yeah, that's what they call yeah. Son of Sam, right? Son of Sam, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like, Which I love Son of Sam, but yeah, you know. No, yeah, my bass player, one of my bands, Eddie. He's he's a big Misfits guy. We okay. actually saw the Misfits last year. Uh, the you know the OG lineup or yeah. as OG as you can get. It. <laughs> yeah, oh, dude, it was so much fun. Oh, that's I, OG I, got, that. <laughs> I got tickets. I got tickets. Uh, got tickets for my birthday last year, and I went with my homegirl who loves, oh, great. who fucking loves them. And we got pit tickets, and like, You're, you are a lucky dude. We all are. We are yeah. the luckiest. Think about all the people who. I mean, and I will say, I think it's the biggest reunion there oh, ever was. Sure. Oh, for it, sure. People for go, sure. oh, oh, Guns N' Roses or, oh, 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 oh like, no, no, no bigger beef. There's nobody, no beef. nobody saw that coming. Nobody saw yeah, that And there's no bigger beef. Yeah, what, there's, there's no, no bigger, bigger beef. beef. They, they still, still hate beef. each other. They still yeah, they hate do. each other. Yeah, they no, do. No, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Yeah, well, All right. I remember, okay, it was like halfway through the show. No one really yeah. found it funny, but I thought it was fucking hilarious. Uh, I get like halfway through the show, Jerry just gets in fucking, you know, angry gorilla mode and like he fucking, <laughs> he fucking smashes his little fucking skeleton yeah, base. Yeah, the show, he smashes yeah. his skeleton base and Danzig yeah. after like just that screaming his balls off. He's just like, yeah, yeah Jerry, uh, beat that base up. <laughs> and he's like, beat that base up like it owes you money. And like, <laughs> and like, I'm no, I don't know. It's just like, nobody thought that was funny, but it was obviously oh, like amazing. a joke about like, you know, like, 
like we fucking like we are doing this because we are getting a fucking disgusting amount of coin for this and just like they make one i think they make i don't know if it's one million or 1.5 million a piece now but it is oh something God, like that. that's sure. insane i wonder if dave lombardo gets that gets no 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 he's on he's definitely on salary ac slade who plays backup guitars on salary i forgot i forgot he's on there too yeah and and Doyle gets Doyle get I don't know what Doyle's deal is now, but he uh, you know he was I think he was not uh, in a good place with their with compensation, and now that might have changed. But I don't I don't know what the latest scuttlebutt is on that. Hopefully, um, hopefully, I hope so. I hope he so. Seem, yeah, he seems like a pretty. He seems like the guy uh, who's He's just a fun like, guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like why can't we just fucking get together and fucking play? Right, and like you know, right. like it was always the Jerry versus. Uh, Jerry versus uh, you know, Danzig thing. It seemed yeah. like my friend Eddie. Funny enough, um, he saw the Misfits in like '97 or like yeah, and when he was like 12 or 13 with his dad, and uh, he saw, he had a photo with Jerry there. Uh, where they took a photo with Jerry, yeah. and like he's looking all like, you know, he's looking like you know, little kid all stoked, like his little mohawk, like with Jerry and. Uh, it's funny, my friend Eddie got paid to actually, uh, he guitar checked for Harley that day in the Chrome oh, really? Yeah, Harley Flanagan. Yeah, because yeah. they opened that day. Um, and um, he was backstage, and it was like, uh, like an hour and a half before Misfits were going on. And he yeah. was just sitting with Harley, and he showed Harley that photo of like him. And then Harley got in like all like, you know, fucking New York Punisher mode and was like, yo, we gotta find Jerry. We gotta show yeah. him that photo. So like, <laughs> He's like running down the fucking dressing room halls, being like, "Yo, Jerry, where are you?" He's like knocking on his door, and he's like, "Yo, dude, like, come on, don't fucking bother him, dude." Like, yeah. and like, he, Jerry opens his door, and like, I don't know, he's getting, you know, he's just like chilling or stuff, and like, he shows um, Harley's just like shows him the picture. He's like, "Hold on, let me." It's like, "Oh, what's that?" And he's just like, "Hold on, let me let me get my glasses," and yeah. uh, he puts his glasses on. And I guess like Eddie was like told kind of told, gave him the context of the photo, and he's like, "Oh, what?" He was like all stoked, so like he recreated that photo with Eddie, my my nice. bass player, and That's like so he even, even put like the big goblin mask, not the big skeleton like thing on his back and everything. Yeah, yeah, like, the mask. That's what he does. Yeah. He puts the mask on everybody. Yeah, the yeah. best. That's yeah, fun. yeah. That's so. Fun. I thought that was a really cool uh, thing for him to do. And, you know, uh, I had Paris on from the Chrome Mags. I don't know if you're a Chrome Mags guy. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's he, we had a, we had some good we had we were we had some good discussions um, about. Uh, he's got a new band out. He's doing something called the Agros, which is I guess his uh, uh, his attempt of originality. I really like it. I think it's really great. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. The Agros. Okay, cool. Um, but. Okay, wait. So, but to 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 flip back to the other side now. Now, Sublime, it's like the same thing. It's like this community of people who like who are just like so. Uh, I don't know. They're just so like that. They pour over every single like meticulous little article thing about this band and the minutia. It's the same thing with the Misfits, but it's just with it's on the West Coast and it's the the California temperament and the California mindset, which is different from the East Coast mindset, as I'm sure you're well aware. And uh it's just I find it fascinating, man. I just find it yeah, absolutely I never, fascinating. I never thought of it. You know, like this my my sublime is like your misfits over there. Yeah. It kind of is, dude, but that's what's yeah. so funny. It's like, and you know, and then, you know, the thing that I see in these groups is like, there's this elitism oh, about yeah, being in the inner circle. Oh, man, I'm, a, I'm with the family. I know the no, family. Dude. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> no, dude, and let me tell you right now, literally being in a band with, uh, with Jacob, yeah. like, has, like, made me, like, loathe it. Like, I and like because I don't want to speak for Jake, he doesn't load right. it or anything, but right. like, dude, you have no idea how annoying it is for him. Like, well, I'm sure you do because you I, obviously, I can, yeah, I can, here's the thing about so here's so here's the, here's the backstory of my discovery of law and how I even know who you are. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. refresh my memory, started, please. Well, it started with it started with Sublime, obviously, being a Sublime fan, and then one day somebody posted this video. Of I guess Jake was like fifteen or something. He was some age, and he's playing singing, his, yeah, he's at, the, at his the, dad's yeah. at his dad's memorial at his dad's tombstone. Yeah, you know? and I'm going at my jaw 
just drops open because I'm like, oh my God, dude, sounds just like his dad. Like, you know, like what everybody says. I'm just, I'm blown away by this. And, he's, and, he, and, and the thing is, he's got the thing. He's got the thing. Meaning like he's got whatever that thing is that his dad had. Between the, it's, and you know what his dad had? His dad had like this casual, did I don't care, singing from my heart, singing from my soul, sort of just doing my thing style that he has. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has that. Yeah. And so I'm hearing him doing his own riff on the guitar of his dad of burritos. And I'm just like, holy shit, this guy is going to make some crazy freaking music. And then fast forward to the debut, the, the, the unveiling of law. And you guys, <laughs> you guys look so funny in those photos though. We were like, you know, oh, dude, 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 don't that remind was, me. Miguel put that together. That was, that was my, well, I'll kind of give you a little bit of a short backstory without making, I'll make it quick. That is actually my first, how I discovered Jake too, was seeing that video. Um, basically, oh, really? what, well, kind of, this is what happened. As you might know, um, you know, uh, when I started, when I was a kid, uh, you know, early in my days of playing drums, like what? yeah, I would fill in playing drums, like for right a song there, or two. Right there, first of all, what, how did that come about? That, that's uh, really cool too. Uh, you Jesus. Don't get super detailed. Just, just, uh, you, it's just hard. Know. It's just hard not to, because like, it's yeah. such a, it's such like a, uh, it's still funny when I think about it. So I started playing drums when I was 10 because of my right. neighbor who lived down the street from me at my old house. Like he played uh -huh. guitar. He was, he was 13. I was 10. Oh, I don't really know anyone who plays drums. You like the same music as me. You should learn blah, blah, blah. We start jamming. That's how I learned drums. So about 12 years, when I'm about 12 years old, my dad, he's a longshoreman works down in the port, uh, the port of Los Angeles down here. And, uh, Mike, uh, Mike Watts, organ player in one of his bands, Mike Watt and the Second Men. His name is Pete Mazich. Right, my dad, man. yeah, and the Second Men. My dad started working with him every once in a while um, on the same jobs, and you know, you know, you bullshit with each other down there and everything, and you know, conversations cross. Like, oh yeah, my dad, you know, told Pete that you know I play music. He's like, oh cool, I play music too. Like I play organ uh, in a few bands. I play for this guy named Mike Watt who's from San Pedro, where you live. My dad didn't even really know who Mike Watt was. It's kind of funny uh, because it's just like, you know, my dad was never a punk guy uh, growing up. You know, he liked music, but, you know, he, he kind of missed out on the movement because when he graduated high school, he went straight to go. He went straight to work in, on the fishing boat and commercial fishing. And, like, you know, yeah. he was just kind of, you know, more of a casual music listener rather than, you know, getting into this whole fucking movement that was going on right in his backyard. Um but anyway, my dad, uh, you know, told uh, Pete that I was a drummer, and uh, Pete gave uh, a, C a couple of CDs to give to my dad for me to listen to. One of them, uh, a couple of them, I remember one was uh, Mike Watt's second opera, The Second Man's Middle Stand, which is The Second Man, um, and uh, The Minute Men's Double Nickels on the Dime. Right, on Double Nickels on the Dime. Yeah. And I remember putting Dan that. Pano. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I remember putting that CD in my. Uh, I remember. I was remember. I was really fascinated by the CD because, like, the same um, no picnic. Yeah, well, that was the song I that I I learned with them. Oh but, really? Yeah. Well, let me get there. Hold on. I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, no. Yeah. Ahead. No. It's funny. It's it's really funny how you're connecting all these. Uh, no, I didn't know you knew that song. I just was. Well, I didn't so know it. Before. So, like, basically, what happened was like. I look at the CD. I'm like 12 years old. I'm like, what is this? You know, but like, I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm like intrigued by the cover because like, you know, it's, it has a guy who I didn't know was Mike Watt until like years later, honestly, um, you know, driving into San Pedro. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. This is a band who I've never heard of. They're from my town where I, where I'm from, where I live. And, and I remember putting in the CD and I was like, this is like, this is punk rock. I mean, of course I knew like the Ramones and the Misfits and bands like right. that, but that was my first taste of like true, like DIY, like, okay, this right. is what punk rock is. I was like, yo, this is like fucking like weird jazz, classic rock, but it's still like weird. And like, it's funny. And this dude can't really sing that well, but like, I don't know. I kind of really fucking liked it. And then I just, you know, with the power of the internet, you know, you start going, you start reading more about the Minutemen and you start learning about like, 
you know, all the other bands that surrounded them. And then you, you, know, you open up the CD case and you see like an order right. sheet for like SST records. And then you find out who like, you know, bands like Black Flag are and like the Meat right. Puppets are. And then like, right. and then you discover, you know, the decline of Western civilization. And then like, right. yeah. And like, and then you just kind of become obsessed. And like, Pete basically told my dad, like, hey, how, how about your boy learns a song and like he could play, he could play a song with us on stage. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, and I, I just, like, I remember, like, I got in contact with Pete. I was like, why don't we just do This Ain't No Picnic? Because, like, you know, it's kind of the most popular song. Like, it's kind of easy. Like, I feel is like it, I can do it. Is that their most popular song? I would argue. I don't know. I mean, like. What about like, Corona? What about Corona? What okay. about, uh, yeah. what about I almost, Cohesion? What about, um, I don't know. I'm not even that big into the Minutemen. I just, but those are, I just feel like those are far more iconic. But, I mean, that's a great song. I love This Ain't No Picnic. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. I mean, that's a, that's subjective, I guess. But yeah, I learned the song. And when I was like 12, I went and, I went and saw Watt at Di Piazza's. And uh, yeah, I remember this. Um, I The first time I saw him play was like, I want to say like six months before that, I saw Mike Watt and the Missing Men play at Di Piazza's because Pete, his organ player, was playing in a different band called Johnny Angry at the time. And my, my dad was... You know, my dad kind of took me just kind of go see his friend's band. But Mike Watt was playing right. after. And, like, I remember, like, I was outside, you know, not really paying attention to Mike's set at first. But I remember walking in, and I remember I was just, like, fucking stoked because I'm, like, 12 years old. And I'm, like, yeah. this is wild. Like, he's got his drummer right up front. He's got this guitar player jumping around. Like, and I was, like, I didn't, like, know any of these songs. But I was, like, yo, this is, like, kind of the fucking coolest thing I've ever seen. And then eventually my dad comes in and starts watching, too. He's, like, yo, this is – because my dad plays bass. And he's, like, yo, it's, like, this is fucking – this is, like, very different, but, like, of what I usually listen to. But but I love it. Anyway, this night when I go see the uh, – I go see Mike play, you know, I know it's my, it's my night because I know I'm going to get called up at some point and, like, there's a video on YouTube and like I get up and apparently, <laughs> apparently like, you know, I'm like this chubby kid who's like 12 years old. Like, uh, got my shirt that like fucking my blue button up shirt and like got my bowl cut. And, like I go upstairs, I go upstage and you know, what like gives me a fist bump. It's like, I'm like, Hey, I'm Nick. He's like, what? And like, oh, you met him right there. Huh. Yeah. I met him right yeah. there. And like, wow. I think he was under the impression that he was like doing his, you know, his band made a favor kind of thing. Right, right, right. Humoring him. Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah. I think like immediately, you know, like I learned the song well enough to be like, you yo, impressed I was, you, yeah, you impressed I, I think yeah. I did, you know, like That's I think cool. I did. Uh, he saw potential in me. And uh, that's great. That kind of became a thing where every time I would go see him at a local show, which would be like, you know, once every few months, you know, uh, I would, he would call me up on stage and I would do a song and whether it was the say no picnic or I eventually learned little man with a gun in his hand or then uh, Gloria man, and, you know, here and there, I would just, you know, go up and do songs with him. And that was really fucking, it's kind of interesting to think about it, like, cause he didn't do that for anybody, dude. Like, I don't, I don't know if it was just him. Like bottom line is man, it, it was cool. And one night, I went and saw him again at the piazzas and I played Gloria man with him and Miguel was in the audience, Miguel Happel. And wow. um, I had no idea who the fuck Miguel was. And I don't even remember this moment, but apparently he still, he still lives just, he's I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. Just interjecting real quick. So he still lives out in uh, long beach. Yeah. He lives in long beach. Yep. Wow. Yeah. He lives in long beach still. I think he moved up and down the coast for a bit, but he's been in long beach proper for like a little, like, I think like 10 years now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah, dude, like, I don't even remember this, but I guess after I played with Watt, Miguel came up to me and was like, what's the hardest Minutemen song you can play? And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know, probably the one I just played. Like, Do you know who he is at that moment? No, I had no idea who the fuck he was. Like, I thought he was just some random scruffy looking motherfucker just like, you know, bothering you me. You mean the Sublime like, at that point? Oh, yeah, like, Sublime was a, was a big... It's a big band for me that I really much liked at right. the time. And I remember listening to fucking uh, that Minutemen CD for the first time, too. And in History Lesson Part 2, you know, they oh, said, Rock Pains Are Alive. Oh, Rock Pains Are Alive. I was like, yeah. oh, what the fuck? This is from that yeah. song? Because, you know, obviously growing up in Southern California, I heard Sublime first, you know? That's the beautiful thing about yeah. Sublime, too, is that you just literally, and, you know, with the bootlegs that came out and there's Rewind Selector, you literally can find 
so many references. That's how I discovered Barrington Levy. Yeah, dude. You know, nice. Murderer. Dude, friggin', uh, uh, the Girl is Mine. Like, just so many yeah. great friggin' uh, HR, the, the, the solo HR album uh, with Shame in the Game on it. Yeah, uh, yeah, Rock, yeah. Uh, Charge. I think it's called Charge. Freaking mm-hmm. just fin- that whole album, top to bottom, is which which they used to be the backing band for HR for that album. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Anyway, continue your story. No, dude, but no, it's, just, it's funny. I was I was gonna say that. Like, uh, what's the uh, like greatest hits by Sublime? Like that is uh, that's the what the that's, song greatest hits? Yeah, like the song greatest hits. It, bah, nah, bah, bah, bah. Yeah, Annabelle. yeah, that's that's the I don't know I don't know the name of that rhythm, but uh, I know it's like I know Yellow Man made it. He made like he probably has the most popular. It was Zunga 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 Zang. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I yeah. Did not know that either. Oh, okay, dude, you gotta look that song up. That's like probably like my, that's like one of the best dance hall songs ever. Um, but yeah, I mean, anyway, just, yeah. It's, sorry, go, go ahead, continue, continue. No, but uh, yeah. So I guess why I shortly after that. Miguel emailed Watt like I want to say like a month after that show and said like what's up Watt loves the new opera beef heart approves blah 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 <laughs> like and uh he's like I was completely stoked on watching this guy Nick the little homie Nick Aguilar play drums with you um Brad's got a Brad uh, has got a son. He's moving to Long Beach soon. And I really feel like this kid should play drums. Uh, should play drums with Jake. They're kind of close to the same age. And of course, wow. me me being like a huge Sublime fan, when I got that email from Watt, uh, I was like stoked. I was like, wow, it's what like a random feel. Like it's like, oh, Mike Watt's emailing me, but he's emailing me because the <laughs> because the son of 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 Brad from Sublime. Uh, is t- putting an outfit together, or there's an outfit being put together, and yeah. uh, I'm being tapped. Like what, or or asked? No, I know. Or, like you know. you know, Watt emailed me as per usual. You know, him and I would correspond here and there because I remember like whenever I would see him at shows and stuff, gotcha, I would always gotcha. email him and be like, "Yo, yeah. what, what was this song that you played?" Or like something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. You know, being some little kid, and then he was like, "So I'm like 15, 16 at this point." And uh, you into the Stooges yet at that time? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think. Oh my God! Yeah. So you, that's so cool too. That connection as well. Okay. Oh, gotcha. dude. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's funny too. Like, um, yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, any household oh, punk oh, band oh, at the yeah. time, like, I was like already into. You know, like any basically gotcha. any band that Watt covered, I was right into at a very young age. Like that's how I got into Wire at such a young age. The Stooges. Wow. You know, the pop group. You know, like. Uh, cool guy punk bands like that, you know, like that's how I like them at such a young age because Watt covered them. And you know, wait, so you know, Wire, are you you've listened? So going back to Sam Hain for a minute, there's a song called "In My Grip" by Sam Hain on November Coming Fire. Go listen to that song. It's a Wire song. He got oh, that from Wire, dude. Yes, What's straight up. I, like, that song? I gotta find the name of the song. I'm gonna find it right. Keep talk. Keep telling your story. I'm gonna find it for you right now. Because I think it's really going to blow your mind. This blew my mind. Keep keep telling me your story. I'll, I'll I'll get the song for you right now. So after I get that email from Mike, I get in contact with Miguel. Obviously, I'm like, "Yo, who's this guy? Who's this guy?" He sets up a time for us to jam. Jake wow. uh, Jake drives up here. I meet him for the first time. Um, What's that you know, like? Hey, what's up, dude? What's up, yeah, dude? that's kind of how it was. It was just like a sub dude kind of thing. Like, yeah, this is like a weird setup kind of thing. You know, we were kids, man. We didn't know what the fuck we were doing. And so Jake came up and with his with his boy Dakota, um, who was the first bass player of the right. band Law. He was and, a hip hop guy. So yeah, the yeah, the yeah. The rapper and like that was his. That was basically his thing at first. You know, he was always he's always wanted to be a rapper. You know, it was kind of like bass kind of came second for him. And mm. I remember we jammed and like, dude, he didn't even know how to fucking play bass. Like, it was I was just like, yo, what the yeah. fuck? Like, and, and to be fair too, like Jake didn't even know how to fucking really play guitar that well. I was like, man, what the fuck am I doing here? Kind of thing. And I yeah. remember like, so like we jammed barely like at this little lockout uh, in, in Long Beach. And then me and Jake jammed again a couple days after that, just me and him, which was a lot more fun. I wish I still had, because like Dakota was sick and uh, I'm not saying it would have been better. Like, you know, I'm not no disrespect to Dakota or anything, but like, I don't know. Like I remember just me and Jake got in a room and like, we jammed like two songs, like very early versions of that song flower. And that yeah, song, 
Yeah, that song Flower and that song Bleach My Brain. It's funny, man. Yeah, Bleach My Brain is good, too. I just had a build of nostalgia. Like, I haven't said the name Flower out loud in, like, so long. Like, I still think that is a very, very, very cool song, the way, like, it oh was. Oh, my uh, God. It's, listen, okay, so let me, let me interject here real quick about this. So, first of all, um, yeah, I, I have to say, so at the same time, they're starting to be see. I'm starting to see rumblings on Facebook, or whatever. Oh yeah, there's this. They're 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 putting this thing together. This thing's coming together. Blah blah blah. You know. Um. And then there was the someone posted the first show at DPS's that you guys did. Yeah, I think that was um, Johnny Johnny Bleed. Yeah, somebody did, and I'm yeah. like, oh wow, this is like because I'm that's my first time hearing. This is two, 2013, maybe. And I'm like, 20, yeah, I'm like, it was dude. our first show was June of 2013 at DPI's. Yeah, dude. And I remember I was listening back then. I'm like, dude, this is this is awesome because the thing was even back then. And obviously, I know your sound was a lot closer to Sublime back then than it is now. And I want to talk about the the out the last album you guys put out is phenomenal. I want to talk about that in a minute. Um, but what blew my mind is that going back to what I said about like seeing that video of him playing at his dad's grave, he's just doing, he's just doing his own style. Like he's just do, he just, he's got it. That's why none of these copycats can do what, what Jake can do or what sublime did. They don't have it. They don't have to no. whatever no. that thing is. They just don't have it. He has it. So I'm listening to flower and I'm going, Oh my God, this is like, this is so much better. Like this is so much better than if this dude was covering his dad's music. It's just, it's his music. It's, it's genuine. It's yeah. him. It's from his gut. And it just sounds, it sounds like a little like sublime, but it's its own thing. I'm like, I'm like, this is the valid content. Like who want, who cares? I'm like all these friggin' nerds nerding out about, Oh, why don't you, you know, go back, and, uh, you know, just like stupid, so stupid. It's like, it's like this is exciting because the dude has enough talent to make his own original music. So, like you know, and the, and I don't know why you guys kind of were embarrassed or 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 dismissive, I should say, of mild autism at one time, right? Like, wasn't it well, like I'm going to tell you right now my genuine, honest stance because I recorded that album when I was a senior in high school, which was like five years ago at this point. So I'm going to say what I want to say about it okay. unapologetically. I okay. think there are a lot of cool moments on that album, album, whatever it is. It's like 25 minutes long. I mean, I guess you could say that's that. That's an album? Dude, Jay Retard, yeah. Blood Visions? Come on, Yeah, dude. it's true. Come that's on. one of my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Nobody okay. Yeah. Love, dude, Nobody Love Visions is 22 minutes long, and it's the perfect length. Nah, that is one of my fucking favorite records of all time. Come on, come yeah, on. I do love that record. Can't be dismissed with that. But I think... I just think the rapping specifically didn't really yes. mesh that mesh that well. I can't stand the rapping. I'm going to be yeah, honest. I was I mean, going to say that to you. I felt o comfortable enough saying well, here's it. Here's the thing, man. No disrespect to Dakota at all. Like he's Doesn't work, he, dude. he's a, yeah, he's a good rapper for what it for what it for for what it is. And you know, back then, you know, it was kind of just like, you know, it almost just felt like it was just kind of half-assed thrown in there and it was just like it just it was didn't, in the middle. It, yeah. it was in the middle like flat flower to go back to flower again. It just goes into a rap in the middle of flower. I'm like, I, yeah. don't, I just don't need this, man. No, I, I know. It's sizzling. And then all of a sudden it's like pretty little flower, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not <laughs> like, I'm like, damn, like this element is not. Uh, no, cute. I know. It didn't but, really, it didn't really, it didn't really mesh that well to be, to be completely fair. And uh, I don't know. And. That's kind of the only, that's really it. But like, you know, the songs that don't have it, like I think Drown It is a, still a really good song. Like I still think most of those songs are really good. Um, Dude, the whole album, the, part, the whole album but, minus the rap parts is great. I love it. I like yeah, it a lot. It, I do. Yeah. And I, I feel like you and a lot of people have said that same thing. And you know, it is what it is. Like I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping at all. But uh, um, I don't have any gripes with it other than that, really. I think Toxic is when... It started to take a, a, a turn for the uh, I don't know the better I guess, but oh, I don't no. know. It, it's Toxic it's taken great friggin' song, dude. That whole album. What's that? That's an EP. Yeah, the Toxic EP. Yeah, I'm very, yeah. I'm really proud of a lot of the the stuff on that EP for sure. Um, I think Good Thing Liquor Store. That's still one of my favorite songs to play with them for sure. Um, 
I, I I still love that song very much. I still dude. think I honestly think Labor is still a fucking great song. All like, of it, dude. All of yeah. it. That, that whole yeah. EP. There's not a bad bone. The the thing that didn't work for Law, if if I'm being honest, as a unbiased East Coaster from all the way on this side of the country who's just like sort of into this thing. It's just the rap elements didn't work. Yeah, it didn't really it didn't work. work. Uh, everything else worked. And you know what? Moving away from the sublime esque, you know, direction and sort of like focusing on, you know, and here's the thing too. I think that, and I think I see this a lot. So, so uh, back again, what's it called? Uh, Aaron back again. Aaron back again, which is the Lord of the Rings reference. Um, this is a very eclectic album. Uh -huh. You guys are doing, you guys are throwing in the kitchen sink, but it's not a bad thing. It's very refreshing to go from thing to thing to thing. And some of those things are unapologetically chili peppers. Oh, dude, I know. I know. <laughs> Trust me. I Control. Know. Control. I know. Autumn light. Yeah. What's the what's the little riff at the end of Doses of Psychosis? It's like is that a Sabbath riff? At the very end, <laughs> am I right? Is that sad? Yeah, I forgot I about that. Aiden just yeah. at the very end was just like, "See, dude, all right, let me just let me talk about that album for a second. Sure, go ahead. There, go ahead. I have. There are some moments on there that I love, and there and there are some moments on there that I can't stand, and a lot of it has to do with the context behind how a lot of those songs were written. And uh, a lot of them came together quite naturally, and a lot of them were uh, quite, to be quite honest, like punished into me, which is why I don't have a lot of love for that record as I would as I would like to, uh, because it is technically, you know, the first full length thing that we did. There's not a lot of good memories, let's just say, surrounding a lot of those songs on that record, uh, which is why I don't love I don't love it so much. And I, yeah, love that song. That song we came together fucking fantastically. That song, song is great. I think Control's great. I think I think Cold is great. Um, I think I don't know. I'm even I'm like forgetting a lot of it. But yeah, like a lot of those songs were kind of forced. If I'm being completely honest, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. The guys could say whatever they want about it. You know, um, that's just how I feel. Gotcha. Um, it's just like. What it doesn't what? feel true inside, like it yeah. doesn't feel yeah. true inside of you when it's coming out, like it's just not. Yeah, I tr I could say with with uh, you know for sure that you know because of a lot of unfortunate circumstances b between how our dynamic worked back then, a yeah. lot of it was uh, let's just say it was pretty unhealthy, and okay. uh, and uh, you know I don't want to go into too much detail just to right, just out, right, right. out right. of respect. Of course, but I don't have a lot of good memories with that era. Um, are you are, now? Here's the thing: you've been, you've been, uh, you were. I quit twice. Met, okay, <laughs> but you're currently in. Are you currently in the band right now? I'm I'm in the band right now. Yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, the band right now is. I'll tell you right now, it's just me, Jake, and Aiden. We don't have a uh, a set bass player right now, um, and I am like my relationship with the band is like, I don't know like what the world is going to look like next year. Like, you know, the, right. you know, it's like, I don't know if shows are going to be a thing, but me, Aiden and Jake, we write song. Let's just say when we got back, when we linked up again earlier this year, like June, like I think it was June when we started you guys were recording a new album, right? Yeah. So okay. I'll, I'll get to that. So no, go no, you're good. You're good. No, like, they reached out to me, I want to say, in, like, March. You know, they had a new rhythm section. Didn't work out. And um, they hit me up and was like, yeah, we got a couple shows coming up. Uh, we got a couple shows coming up at the end of March, uh, beginning of April. Will you at least be down to fill in? And I'm like, yeah, man, why the fuck not? And uh, eventually those shows didn't happen because of, you know, the goddamn... You know, co fuck yourself. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, of course, you know, time started, you know, going by, and like, you know, we were just like, I think they hit me up. We were just like, you know, could we, you want to just write? And I'm like, yeah, why the fuck not? So we got together in a room and like we hustled for like two months and wrote like eight, nine really fucking dope songs. And then I really, then we all realized it's like, yo, this is so fucking easy. Why weren't we, 
why weren't we doing this before? And then, you know, the answer is obvious, but like, it's fine. And um, thing is, man, like these last batch of songs that we wrote, like are like, in my opinion, and maybe it's just because this, this is me just saying this because it felt so right. The best shit that we are going to, that, that the world will eventually see um, and listen to. I think it's, it is really its own thing. Um, it's so after we got together, and wrote all those songs, you know, we recorded them up uh, at the studio in Sacramento called uh, J Street Recorders. It was just us three. Uh, so Aiden played guitar and bass. Jake played uh, guitar as well and sang, obviously. And I did drums and, you know, whatever percussion bullshit I decided to throw on. And uh, we had this really awesome engineer named Jack who is like the fucking best engineer I've ever worked with. Like the first day I got there, like uh, he just basically tuned my drums all day, like all fucking day. And I'm glad he did because he got my drums to sound fucking immaculate. And like the dude, like to the brim, like cares about his job and like making a band sound amazing. And uh, we got the station, dude. Yeah, if you and, like, do, since, we're on lock, since we're on lockdown too, like, we just stayed at the studio the entire week. And uh, the only, the, I was really the only person leaving to go to the store for people. Um, and like, so it was sick. We got to basically live at the studio um, and just like, you know, wake up, piss, shit, if I'm lucky. And, uh, you know, eat, record, and then do the whole thing the next day, you know, like. Dude, you could have done your own version of Funky Monks if you had. Uh... <laughs> It's like you know, could have gotten it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like fly on the wall, just like you know. Hey, it's COVID. We're in the studio. Yeah, we did have we did have our friend named Kevin who was in town take some photos and a little bit of footage, but uh, he couldn't stay that long, unfortunately. Uh, But dude, honestly, man, like, let me just tell you, recording those songs, writing those songs, being with those guys again, like, it made me realize, like, wow. Aiden has been like my best friend in music since I was like 16 years old from a different outlet. Wow. um, Jake has been that other guy for me from a whole different outlet. And the way it all came together years ago when I was like, yo guys, like, you know, Jake was like, you know, it kind of got to the point where like, you know, we were a three piece with law back in the day when we were like, when I was like 17, Jake was 18, Dakota was 19. And it was just like, yo Jake, it was just kind of like became a thing like, yo Jake, you're not that good at guitar. And like he was kind of like, yeah, like I know, like blah blah blah. And like I was like, well, I got my friend. Like it kind of became a thing. It was like unspoken thing. Like, you know, J- I don't mean no disrespect to Jake at all. You know, he knows a big dude. He's gotten way better. Like, that's besides the point. That's how Aiden came into the picture. And mm-hmm. like they clicked, obviously, because you know, they were both video game nerds and like, you know, um, so it's just like, you know, it all it all meshed together. And like, you know, me and Aiden and Jake. We just realized that we fucking work very well together and have written, you know, some of the best material that, in my opinion, you know, we're, we've ever written together. You know, it, tough. That's one. I'm really yeah. glad to hear that, man. That's wonderful. Cool. It's like, I don't know. It's like the Pixies meets like. What? I would say so. This new stuff. It's like. Pixies what? Meets like- whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So, <laughs> so I told you about the Misfits. I yeah. told you my, feel- my feelings about Sublime. Another one of those bands for me is the Stooges. And the thing I didn't tell you is. My one experience with Mike Watt is, you know, you know, in the Stooges set, they say, Iggy goes, this isn't Nazi Germany. Everybody get on the stage. Oh, yeah. Everybody runs. That's why my tooth is chipped right here. I chipped this tooth in the, in the Stooges mosh pit uh, in 2004 when I was 18. I uh, just got my face. Somebody rocked me in the face. My wow. tooth shattered during real cool time. Wow. And no fun. And then he's saying everybody stormed the stage. I, I didn't get a chance to storm the stage because my 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 face was fucked up. Uh, but then I did, and I was this close to Mike Watt, who when he plays bass, and I say this with much love and respect, when he plays bass, he <laughs> looks like he's having an aneurysm. He's like, no, I know. Oh! Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> and I was just like, I was just like right there in his yeah. face, like seeing. That's when they do a shake appeal, I think, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, wait. What do you mean? When when he's when he gets like that, or they have the song "Shake Appeal," and right. I remember 
that's the song that he would call everyone up to this uh, to dance. Oh, to. maybe maybe after Ron died, but when Ron yeah, was yeah, still yeah. in the band, because yeah, yeah. Ron and James were not. Uh, uh, no, I know, I know the story. You know the, that, that I, story. Yeah, so. I, um, I never got to see them with Ron on. Uh, on see, I saw tour. him with Ron twice. I never got to see him with James. The James is fucking shreds, man. Like you know, he's yeah, really, dude. But dude, Ronnie's the fucking you know, Ronnie's the guy, man. Like yeah, I don't know. Like he's. Someone tried fucking saying, like, dude, James Williams all the way. Ron Ashton can't play a guitar solo to play, sit in his oh, fucking please. Life. It's like, man, get the fuck out of here, dude. I don't care. Like, there's riffs on Funhouse. Oh, yeah. Like, that's like my, yeah, Funhouse. Yeah, that's like my all time. That's probably like, I don't know. That's yeah, probably my top five deep. records of all time. Like that, yeah, that. Double, double Nickels on the Dime by Minutemen. Love Supreme by John Coltrane. Wow. Uh, Fun House by Fun House by the Stooges, obviously. You're Living All Over Me by Dinosaur Jr. And uh, I don't know. I have to think of a, a, a worthy, a worthy you, number five. But yeah, you, you are very musically. You are musically educated. Um, have you have you seen that new Fun House box set, man? That that <laughs> yeah, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> you can I ain't buying that. I ain't buy it. <laughs> I don't want to hear. I I just need the fucking. I just need the. Right, you just want the seven cuts, and you're good. Yeah, the seven. I don't need Iggy farting or fucking. Yeah, but you know what? You know what's really cool. I mean, you literally when you listen to Fun House, and then you think about that sentence, and the sentence was Iggy saying, "I wanted to bring the blues." Fuck, what was the sentence he said? This is what started the Stooges. He said. I wanted to bring the blues to teenagers or something. I forgot what it was. Yeah, and that is that is literally the sentence that births like the 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 the, the movement of punk rock. Mm -hmm. Like even though punk, you know, little Richard was punk. Elvis yeah. was punk. Everybody punk was always been around. Punk is just rock and roll. But yeah. the the idea of punk rock, the counterculture movement of punk rock, that began with that sentence with Biggie doing that thing you know like it just i don't know well, it was a lot of it was a lot of it was pretty influenced by a like funk movement too like by J like with J like james brown specifically i remember like I, i've been hearing about this lately about like, james brown being uh well Watt was telling me like because like you hear in funhouse you know like james brown just think james brown's thing is like commanding his band like right. bring you know, it down like, yeah bring it down take him to the, take him to the bridge yeah, Take him to the bridge, you know, yeah. like, in. like yep. that's what, that's like what Iggy would do. Like, so let me right, in. Dude. But his thing would be like, holy crap, I never it, thought about that. Yeah, like like in Funhouse, he says, like, "Let me in," but like, yeah. they don't let him in yeah. because because that's right. the punk, that's the punk rock part of it. You know, they keep going. You know, yeah. it's like and they'll break him down. It's just like, yo, but don't break <laughs> it down. But they don't break it down because fuck you, dog. Like we're gonna keep fucking yeah. playing. But like, yeah. what if not, but then we. You know, we do it when they least expect it, you know, you know, so like that's that's kind of like but they buy love James Brown, too, man. Like I've been on a, such a big, such a big uh, funky soul kick lately, man. And like, you that's know, he, he really is. You know, I've always liked his music, man. But like I've really been delving into like more of his shit and like how fucking insane he was to have a band that tight. And, music, you know, especially, you know, just drummers at the time. You know, Clyde Stubblefield specifically, dude, he's just like so in the pocket. It's just like, dude, he's just like robotic. Man. You know, it's just like. Oh, my God. I have to turn you on to this band that you're going to love. I, I don't know if you've heard of them. I saw them live. They came to St. Vitus in Brooklyn. Um, have you heard of Dark Thoughts out in Philadelphia? Yeah. yeah, you, are yeah, yeah, yeah. you are the coolest kid ever. That no, you I, 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 I know I have heard of them. They're on my, uh, I think they're on my friend's label, actually. Okay. Okay, um, I have to tell you about this band. If you okay, this the drummer of this. You as a drummer are gonna appreciate. Oh yeah, this dude, band. I fucking know this band. I think you my uh, that self-titled uh, album. Eighteen minutes, dude. Twelve songs. Eighteen minutes. You're telling me twenty-five minutes is too short for an album? Eighteen fucking minutes is dar uh, Dark Thoughts self-titled album. That thing scorches. That thing sears my face off every time I listen to it. It's yeah, so I, they're like a punk band, right? They're a punk band. They yeah. are disciples of the Ramones. It's they're a power three piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the drummer is one of the tightest, fastest. Just he's a machine, and he, mm -hmm. you know, again, as you were talking about, you know, drum, good drummers are hard to come by. This guy, like, I just sit there again, not a drummer, not a musician, don't speak any musical language. I just sit there, just 
watching this guy play the drums and like in awe of how he can hold it down. And oh, they're dude, like, yeah. <sighs> great. They're f I'll definitely have to check them out. I mean, like, have you heard of a, you ever heard of radioactivity? Fucking love radioactivity. Yeah, 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 yeah. What like, self-titled is the self-titled album with the one with the sickness? Yeah, yeah. I love that record. That's one um, of my that's like one of my favorite modern punk records ever. That's, I, um that's the and doesn't that they share band members with the marked men? Yeah, yeah. It's uh the dude Jeff, like anything that's like Jeff derivative. Okay. Uh, yeah, great, great band. Dude, they radio activity they played and I missed them and I'm so pissed. No, they played they, Nightbirds, and I missed it, man. Oh yeah, see, so you like you like Nightbirds, yeah. That's how I know Dark Thoughts because Brian okay. he books one of my band's neighborhood brats under his thing, okay. uh, Wired Tour booking. So that's how I know that's how I know a lot of these newer punk bands because of, because of him. Dark Thoughts are underground, man. They they don't even have a they don't have any social media presence except for a band camp. That's it. Oh wow, yeah. man. They're super. They don't have Facebook. They don't have Twitter. They don't have Instagram. They are. And so when we found out they were coming, to, uh, they weren't even, they weren't even opening. I mean, they weren't even headlining. They were just an opening slot. We came there for the 20 minute set and um, oh my God. And we bought their second record. It was like th their vinyl record was like $13. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what are you selling these at cost or something? Like, I, just Probably. Yeah. I was like, these guys are, are true to the core. But but to get back to the Pixies thing, my point about oh, the, Stooges, yeah. the Stooges are one of my best bands. Sublime, the Misfits, um, uh, uh, the Beatles. The Beatles are like my my you know whole all those bands are like the top five bands. And the last one is the Pixies, mm -hmm. who are my like every single note of every single record of the original Pixies uh, uh, catalog is like to me like perfect. There's no, oh, yeah, dude. no it's bad really, bone. On it's that for sure perfect. Like every once in a while, like I think I even tweeted this out like a few months ago. It's like every once, it's like ever, you know, it's like I think I think to myself, man, I don't really like the Pixies as much as I used to. And then I put on Surfer Rosa, <laughs> and then I put on, and then I put on Surfer Rosa, and I'm like, yeah, dude. no, nah, dude, this shit still fucking holds up so well. Like, oh my god, yeah. still, I don't know. I love how that record is sonically. I love how like it's still. There's really still not a lot of bands that can emulate that style of like snotty, like fucked up, but like really catchy, like alternative rock the way that they did. Man, like I don't know. Do you have a they, favorite? I, do you have a favorite record? Oh, okay. So, oh wait, before we even before I answer that question, <laughs> I I because that is a very complicated question. I have two things I want to say about the Pixies, but before I say those two things. So where does the Pixies influence come in the law? Is that you? Is that Jake? Is that Aiden? Who's bringing that uh, into it? I don't know, man. Like, uh, probably, probably, probably all three of us, man. Like, um, you all listen. So you guys are all listening to the Pixies and what? Yeah, we we all love the Pixies, man. Like, what? I mean, yeah, dude, it's totally. So cool. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, who doesn't these days, man? They're fucking, they're fantastic. Like, they are, and they've um, never been in a better place as a band right now. They are, first of all, I don't know if you've listened to the newest album. It's a final, it's a truly a return to form, in my opinion. What's it called again? It's called Beneath the Eerie. Mm -hmm. And the thing about um, this album is, here's the problem with the with the new Pixies, and here's the problem with, you asked me what my favorite album was. My there's favorite, no him. well, there's no, I don't have a favorite, if I have to pick a favorite album, if I have to pick one, it's Doolittle. But I don't want to, because... Here's the thing. Once I listen to one song on Doolittle, I have to listen to it in its entirety. And then yeah. once I listen to Doolittle in its entirety, I have to listen to Bossa Nova. Then I have to listen to Trump Lamond. Then yeah, I have to go back to Come on Pilgrim. Yeah. And then I go to Surfer Rosa. And I listen to, there's not like, I think about how tight uh, Come on Pilgrim is. The fact that uh, it was a demo so and released as a, as a, as a mini, as an EP. It just, it's the best, dude. It's the yeah. best all the way around. The entire album, Holiday Song, Nimrod's Son. You just can't. I mean, uh, Caribou. You Caribou. open the entire band's, dude. The entire band's catalog is open with a song called Caribou. I know like, being reincarnated into a Caribou. Like it's just such a. He's he's like a surrealist. Like the, the, he blows my mind. But here's the thing about the Pixies that that also blows my mind. So he he turns into Frank Black. He yeah. starts writing. 
the first three Frank Black albums might as well kind of be Pixies albums in the yeah, sense of great. like they're great, they're great but his songwriting is still very surreal. But then something changes. He gets he becomes the he, he becomes Frank Black and the Catholics. He starts recording to two track uh, two inch tape. They do one to two takes for the whole song. So they don't even that's not. It's not uh, what's it called? Uh, they're, they're not doing layers and layers and layers of, of of stuff. They're just doing it live in the studio to tape, and um, and they're doing this country western thing. And then he goes back to being a pixie. And he goes back yeah. to being like Francis. And here's the thing, though: how the fuck do you start writing like you wrote when you're 25 and sit like it's everything's different. Every song, like the that first album that indie cindy album everything sounds like frank black songs like it doesn't i'm gonna be dead honest man i have actually uh i've actually never listened to it uh because i've just heard how fucking terrible it is it's not so, terrible if you're frank if you like frank black you'll enjoy it but it's not pixies man it's not like what goes boom sounds like a pixie song to me. okay um yeah, maybe maybe I'll, I'll i'll give it a give it a shot you want to know something? I'm going to give you my. I have a Spotify mix. I took, I made a Spotify mix called Beneath. What is it? It's called, uh, God, what's the second album that they put out? Uh, the new band. What's it called? Uh, Head. Oh, Beneath the Head of Cindy. That's what it's called. Okay. And it's, um, it basically takes 14 tracks from the three new Pixies albums and tries to make a master Pixies record. Okay. Okay. And I tried to sequence it how I think the Pixies would do it. And um, I think that is probably the closest thing you're going to get to a, a a cohesive Pixies album. But the new album is really, truly a return to form. I'll, I'll send that to you as well. I think you'll appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Send me, send me whatever, man. Seriously. Yeah. Um, so, so, okay. So you guys are recording again. You're doing these songs. I did see. One thing I don't know how long ago this was. You did jam. You you played on Jam in the Van, or you were in Jam in the Van. Yeah, we did that thing. It was cool. It was cool. They. Uh, what was that like? What's that situation like? Because like all my favorite bands. It was like, fun. It, it, it was it was fun. It was a little. Uh, it was a little. Uh, it was very professionally ran, like yeah. they of, but like hearing back and getting back from them about certain mixes and stuff, they were kind of spotty with it and like. They were kind of like what they were kind of like weird about like you know when they were going to drop it or nothing, never gave us the true answers. But like they're busy, man. It's fine. Yeah. Like I think they're just you know it was it, and it was good content for us too. So I wasn't I wasn't tripping at all. But uh, I got a, it was a little uncomfortable the day of because uh, after we played like I don't know they kind of have to like promote like their weed company too like during the interview part or like some some someone who they're like. Yeah connected with you know you know that how you know free shit works sponsors, sponsors and, uh, yeah. yeah sponsors and like yo it's like okay someone's got to smoke and like jake's like well i'm sober aiden's like yeah i'm sober too he, aiden's not sober he's just a bitch and uh i'm just kidding <laughs> i'm kidding and sean's like I'm, I'm i'm i don't i don't do that i'm like man i smoke sometimes i hate being high during the day but whatever and yeah. uh, i like take a hit out of this little thing they give me and i'm like Oh yeah, it was good. He's like, man, that wasn't a hit. I kind of faked it. I was like, I didn't want to be yeah. high today. And like, so they're pressuring you into. Smoking. They weren't like really pressuring me, but they were kind of just like, dude, come on. I'm like, man, fine. So I take this hit. I start coughing like crazy. Oh man. And I'm like, oh fucking hell. Obviously under my mask. Yeah. Anyway, and, uh, I remember during this interview, I was just fucking blazed out of my mind, dude. Like, stuff. Oh yeah, and it was funny. When you listen to the interview, you can't really tell that I'm stoned, and uh, but it's funny. And that was the only funny thing that was uh, that was the only thing that was like I don't know uh, interesting about it. But other than that, it was it was cool. Like it's good content, you know. It's uh, we got to play some of the the, uh, the songs that are going to be on the new album, um, like that song. Okay, so that's where I can hear. I have not I've not listened to. I've not watched the video. I just knew you were yeah. on there. Um, so, so, so that's where I can hear the new songs. Yeah, so we did Great. four songs. One was Kaizaku, which I'm sure you know. Because yeah, that's, that's, on, back again. that's on the last album. Yeah, right. we did there and back again. I mean, we did a, we did a, yeah, we did Kaizaku. We did a Good Thing Liquor Store. Yeah, and we did a, a new song called Alien. Okay, and we did a new song called Ghost. And that stuff is Pixies esque. 
I mean, kind of. I don't know, man. I want you to listen to it. That way you could give me, like, what you think it sounds like because it's okay. kind of hard It's kind of hard to you say. Dude, you got me so stoked when you said Pixies because I love the freaking Pixies. I, I mean, it will definitely it, – it definitely – I think Ghost – Undeniably sounds like a fucking un- undeniably sounds like a Trump de Lamond era of like Pixies where it's like oh, where, oh, where, where, cool, where it's like kind of goofy and like repetitive and like but okay. like it's still like it still rocks. Uh okay. I don't know, dude. Like it's uh we're just doing we're doing our thing. We're yeah. we're, we're not letting you know, we're not letting uh it's just kind of whatever feels right, dude. And I'm I'm yeah. happy to be jamming with those guys again. And uh, you know, we'll see what we'll see. Right. We'll see what we can do when the when the world starts to open up, open back up again. It has and to what I can do with my other projects, and whether if it's with Neighborhood Brats, Slaughterhouse, or Mike. Tell Watt, me about those. What's tell me about Neighborhood Brats? What's that about? Well, that's a band that's existed for a few years now, since like you know, honestly, like the early 2010s. Lots of it's always been the same guitar player and the singer Jenny and George. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, different rhythm sections you know because bass players are dumb and drummers are dumb and you know i kind of i stepped in for george a few years ago like after i after i uh quit law for the first time and uh been with him ever since and he's taken me on tour a few times and showed me you know luckily for them i got to go to europe for the first time and it was fucking awesome and you know they catch- good. they treat you better in europe yeah they do oh my god they do <laughs> and uh they took me on my first u.s tour like uh, where well, we got to do a grip of those shows with the adolescents, who I'm sure you're familiar with, oh, yeah. and uh, that's awesome. Yeah, dude, um, it's really good ripping, just fucking Ramones esque, Clash esque, Blitz esque, fucking punk. You know, it's like okay. there's elements of all different kind of shit in there. George is a great songwriter. Jenny is a hell of a front woman. Um, Mike, the bass player, is my friend who I brought into the band. Um, he, he wasn't even really my friend. He was just kind of a dude who I knew who ripped at bass and like, it kind of just all worked out, you know? And, uh, it's been, you know, we haven't really been doing anything. It sucks, dude. Like right before both of my bands, Neighbor Bratz and Slaughterhouse, like right before. What's this, Slaughterhouse about? That's a band that's been around for a few years too. It's kind of like more of the, I guess it takes more of the, the gothier side of punk, I guess, you know? Uh, like- yeah, a like, lot of a lot like of people that. say it's like, oh, you guys remind me of like Sushi, Sushi and the Banshees, or like X, or like bands like that. And, you know, we hear the same old song and dance every time, but uh, it's it's its own thing. It's like death rocky, punk rocky. I don't know. I dig it a I lot. Like death rock. Are you yeah. a Tool fan? Oh, dude, yeah. Like, again, one of my yeah. favorite yeah. favorite bands. And you know what's funny? Like hardcore punkers love TSOL, but what's yeah. fun? What I find hilarious is that. And TSOL will deny it up and down. They don't dress that way. They don't look that way. But those dudes are death rockers, man. Oh, for They're sure. A death rock band, dude. No, dude. Dance with me. <laughs> Dance with me is one of my favorite records. Like, uh, yeah, yeah we. Uh, I always uh, wanted uh, beneath the shadows too. Just oh, beneath the shadows is great too. Yeah, I love those first three releases, dude. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of people say we sound like them too. We got to open for the TSOL last That's couple awesome. of, a That's year awesome. and a half ago. Eddie, the, awesome. yeah, Eddie the bass player is like that's like one of his favorite bands, and like I've never missed an East Coast show since two thousand five. Oh hell um, yeah! I saw him at CBGB's. Saw every time they come back to the East Coast, I was always there. It's my one of my favorite, and I and it's grown. And I love all the records. I love Disappear. I love Divided We Stand. Uh, I love the Trigger Complex, which is the yeah. new one. Yeah, 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 Greg, yeah. Greg, Greg is the father of the dudes in Fiddler. Oh, no shit. I didn't know that. <laughs> you didn't know that? Nah. Yeah, he is. So I was like, wait a minute. Because I had discovered Fiddler. Fiddler opened for the Pixies. And I was like, oh, my God, Fiddler. This band is great. I really like Fiddler, too. And then I was like, oh, crap. The TSOL connection to Fiddler. It just kind of blew my mind. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know that. But yeah, uh, yeah. that's, uh, yeah, a lot of people say, you know, anything that's like death rocky, punk rock in that sense. Right. Like, right. Do, you like, do you know Rudimentary Peni? Uh, a little bit. I do know. I know that Sublime was down with them because they yeah, uh, yeah. that thing that Miguel says about uh, the Peni twist. Yeah. That's uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Familiar with their uh, discography, though. If I'm if I'm being oh, honest. dude, they are fucking. Awesome. I know. I should check them out. They're one of my fucking favorite bands. Yeah, we Slaughterhouse. We covered one of their songs called the Cloud Song. That's a okay. 
That's a great song. You guys are on spot. Is all that on Spotify too? If I want to. Uh, no, just here's the thing. Well, here's the climax. Everything that we recorded, both of my bands, they've heard Bratz and Slaughterhouse, is we're just sitting on because, like, why? Well, because, like, there's no point of putting out a record. You can't fucking tour on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. You yes. know, it's just like, I don't know, especially a new, new, new band like Slaughterhouse where there's like nothing out, you know, and it's yeah. just like, there's like only YouTube footage and like a couple of demos and like, you know, really nothing. Okay, I'll look for that. Yeah, and like, you know, we have a, you know, there's like a fucking, yeah, there's like a live set. Uh, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Yeah, send it to me, please. Yeah. I'll try. I'd like to check that out. We'll have, we'll have to have an exchanging of uh, musics and, and, and things. Um, uh, that's cool, man. So you're, you've really got your fingers in a lot of pies, man. I think that's pretty sweet. Um, uh, so, so now take me back for a second. Cause we, we, we sort of, we sort of went on several, I just got your thing. Thank you. I'll check that out. Um, uh, so, t- so, so to rewind back a little bit. So Miguel introduces you to those dudes and you guys start playing. You do my autism. You, you're, you're out doing your thing, but in your mind, are you just kind of like blown away? I'm just talking, focusing on Miguel for a second. Are you just kind of blown away that like that like this dude has sort of like taken you under his wing in terms of like you know uh, in relation to your reverence for this band Sublime? Um, I think in the beginning I was. I think in the beginning I I viewed him as like this like golden god in a sense, but now he's just kind of become like a homie of mine, you know. Right. Like he's like a good friend of mine. We're like, you know, every once in a while I'll go by his house to like wow. bullshit about him about music or just have a beer or just like but thanks to him, man, he turned me on to so much good music. Like, dude, right. he, he he got me into Dinosaur Jr. He yeah. got me into Husker Du. He got me into so much good Jamaican uh, stuff. Like he turned me on to Sugar Minot, Barrington Levy, uh Tenor Saw. Yeah. Like, yeah, like ten uh right. fucking Admiral Bailey, like a bunch of bunch of fucking. He gave me like a CD. Um, he gave me a CD. I remember when I was in high school, um, of like a bunch of like like a reggae mix that he had, and like I was like, damn, this shit is dope. Like, and yeah, dude, like he, I've I view him very influ- as a very influential person in my life who I hold who will always I'll always hold in high regard yeah. for introducing me to Jake. For showing me so much good music, for you know, there's a there's a few there's a very few people in my life who have generally changed it for the better, and he's one of them. Mike Watt is for sure one of them. Definitely my father. I mean, I guess anyone you know, of course, blood related people, you know, like they count, right. but like you know, right? But like, you know, my mother, my father. Um, you know, I'm an only child, so I've always grown up very close to them. Um, That's wonderful. My- yeah, my grandma too, because we moved in with her um, when she got sick. She passed away last year. I'm really um, sorry to hear that. Oh, dude, I live, dude, I live with my grandmother. I, so check, I lived with my grand, not anymore, but two years ago, I lived with my grandmother, my parents, my wife, and my two children. God, yeah. That so sounds my, like a fucking madhouse. You no, know, it was a madhouse. But you know what? My ninety-year-old grandmother. Was under the same roof as my three month old daughter. Yeah, it's wild. Like, mind blowing. You yeah. know, I was just like one of those things I got to soak it up. And, you know, the thing that's weird about like grandparents is if you're lucky enough to have them when you're older and you get to have that relationship with them as an adult and not as a child, it can be one of the, one of the most rewarding experiences ever. You know, like you're like, holy shit you like lived through like the craziest shit. And like, they tell you just about like, they just tell you about stuff that like, you can't even possibly imagine. And they're related to you. It's just, I don't know. I, 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 it it trips me out. My, my grandmother's still around for, for now, at least. Uh, How old old is she now? 92. She's she's 92 without, without being a bummer about it. She's not in the bed. She's ailing greatly. And yeah, who knows when, you know, it is what it is, man. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm so greedy 
I'm a greedy guy at 35 to still have my grandmother. Like that's wild. We should yeah. only be so lucky. So, you know, it is, but, but you want to know something, you know, if you talk to them every day and you, you have a genuine relationship that whenever they go, it's, it's going to hurt, but it's not going to be a big deal because, you know, you got to appreciate them and enjoy them while they're around. So. Yeah. And that's why I'm really glad that I had a good relationship with her up until she passed and she was never really the same after uh, my grandfather died a few years ago. Anyway, like that's when she really started to like deteriorate, deteriorate. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, she was 91 when she passed. Wow. But, uh, yeah. She had a beautiful. Oh yeah. She was a life. long fucking yeah. life, dude. Yeah. Like I, she was, I could have went. And it I, made me happy too, because like when she was on like, you know, her, her hospice bed, like she yeah. like assured me, that like, cause she, she, she was all together up there until the day she died pretty much. Um, which, which made me happy. You know, she recognized, right. She, right. She, she knew who I was up until the That's moment like where she was. Right yeah. yeah. And, uh, she like told me like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Like I've, I've paid, yeah. my, I've, I've, I've told my dudes like, don't be sad. Like, well, you they could, know, they know. Yeah. <laughs> like you could have, you could have my, you could have my room. Like, uh. <laughs> and I'm like, and I was like, what is, I remember I asked her, like, what can I do, like, to, like, make you happy when you're gone? She's like, get married and have kids. I'm like, fuck, why'd you have to say that? <laughs> uh, you know what? You feel that way right now. You don't know how you, you know what? I got to tell you, I can't think, it, there's so many times in my life where, like, I think about what I think about now yeah. versus what I think about, like, 17 years ago when I was 18 years old or whatever. You know, like it's just so it's amazing how we change. Um, yeah, time. yeah, yeah, I know, dude. Like, you I never know. you never know how you'll feel in a few years. You know, yeah, dude. My mind was like totally different than it was like as it was. I don't know last year. You know, it's yeah. just a constant. It's constantly evolving. You know, how I mean, if I'm, I'm I'm twenty three. I had to think about it. I'm twenty three. Oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah. Got your. I I had my so I had a child when I was just shy of my 30th birthday. I had my okay. first child and you want to know something? I was not ready. And, but you want to know something? I was like, damn, I had my whole twenties. I got to travel Europe. I traveled the entire United States. I've been to the middle East. I was like, I got to, I partied. I got to, you know, do all sorts of shit. And now like, here's, here's a kid when I'm 30. Cool. I'm down with that. And you know, <laughs> Oh, it worked. It worked out. It wasn't so bad. I'm just yeah, saying. No, so I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Not so bad. I, you um, have two kids. Are they both a boy, girl? I... I do. I have two. I have a boy and a girl. And my son is awesome because. What are their names? Uh, Jordan and Noah. But Jordan. Noah with the H. It's just N-O-A. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. it's yeah. And her middle name is Anna, which is she's named after the song on Bossa Nova. But oh, man. But you know what's funny? I wanted to name my daughter Surfer Rosa, and I'm shit you not. That's what I swear to fucking God, hand to fucking heart. And I argued with my wife in the hospital. Like, like you don't understand, negotiations. Like, okay, what if it's just Rosa, but her full name is Surfer Rosa, but we call her Rosa from us. And, you know, we, <laughs> it was just like, no, no. Yeah. No. Okay. How oh, about dude. Name? <laughs> Oh man! Like, if I ever have a daughter, her name has to be Surfer Rosa. That has to be her fucking name. Oh, dude. And um, no, 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 <laughs> no, not, no, no. Yeah, no, it did not go down. Ah. I did not, did not went out. But what's cool about Jordan, my son, is I drive him to pre K every day, and we'd listen to Jay Retard, Blood Visions, every single day in the car. Oh yeah, my son fucking loves Jay Retard. But we don't That's call him awesome. Jay Retard. He's called JJ until he's JJ. a little bit older. Just I, that, that, yeah, just, I don't want him in, in his in his kindergarten to be like, I like Jay Retard. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 that makes sense. You know, I was like, sense. JJ, he's JJ. So um, and he also likes dark thoughts, man. And those are the we jam out in the car to Blood Visions, uh, My Shadow, like these really depressing breakup songs by Jay <laughs> Retard that like my son is just like super into. Oh, dude, that's fucking, that's rad as hell. That's it's fucking... rad as hell, dude. And no bunny too, but uh, you know, I, I'm so, I don't know how to feel about no bunny. I'm like, dude, super, I'm going to be honest. I'm crushed. I, well, like I'm going to be dead honest. Yeah. I'm like not familiar. I've never been like a fan. Not, not because 
not because like he's whack or anything, his music's whack or anything. It's just because like Oh sorry. Oh fuck. Um I uh I just never really have gave like I missed the boat on all that. So like when I heard about you know all the crazy shit, I was just like, well, damn, it's wild. Um yeah, sad. It's just know. so many great bands that have just like uh, just I I was into all those bands, dude. Not all of them, but like, you know, I just it just killed and I was a huge I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know how to feel about it because I'm just like a huge no bunny fan. I saw, you know, I'd see him, another band I would see every time, you know, he come to the East Coast and it's just like, that will never happen again. That is, yeah. those are the funnest shows uh, ever. And uh, no, I believe, I believe you, man. For real. On. Real true shame. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what other kind of music uh, he is into and what, what he sort of like develops and stuff. He listens to my son listens to this band called Imagine Dragons, which I think is not. It's just like not into it at all. Uh, but he likes it. He has it on the Alexa. Yeah, but you want to yeah. know something? I can't knock. I can't yuck on his yums. It's just what he's into. He's got to express. Oh himself. yeah, yeah. He'll find out the good shit as he continues to get older. Oh yeah, he totally. Will. Him, you know, edge edge him that way. Who knows? Um. So yeah, man. Um. But listen, I gotta say thank you so much. For coming on the show, it was really cool to chat with you and talk with you uh, just about uh, just to, just to learn more. I'm so bummed you guys came to the East Coast, and I told I don't know where I think I was working or something, and I'm so pissed I didn't get to see Law play. And I hope that in the future you guys make it back. And um, uh, yeah, we for sure will, back. for sure will, and uh, hopefully in a world that's more uh, controlled mm -hmm. and not fucking chaotic and. Uh, one yeah, last dude. question. What, what? Here's my. Here's my final. Oh my god! I didn't. Ugh. You didn't ask the fucking. The question. The question. I asked the fucking question. And I, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two things. Two things. Thing number one. Um, is pizza punk? And if so, why is pizza punk? Let me ask counter question really quick. Is this a trick <laughs> question? Is this a trick question? No, it's All not right. a trick question. Then fuck yeah, it's punk. It's cheap. It took it tastes good. It's yeah. easy to it's easy to transport. <laughs> like you could fucking throw it out to you know everywhere, like to the to you, your band, your uh, the audience members, like it's fuel, bro. Yeah. Pizza is fucking sick. Is it the best thing for you? Probably not. Is it fucking rad? Hell yeah, pizza's fucking rad. Yeah. Pizza's punk. Pizza's punk. Great answer. Yeah. Great friggin' answer. <laughs> um, the other thing I was gonna ask you that when we were talking about like the state of things in the future. So what in your opinion, what do you think? What do you think is if you obviously no one can know, but what do you think is the future? What's gonna happen with uh live music, live performances? Do you think we're ever gonna find a state of normalcy? Do you think that bands are ever going to be able to tour again the way that they did? Uh, or, or frankly, forget about that. I think bands will be able to tour, but like, will audiences be able to audience the way that's that they what can audience? Yeah, see, that's what worries me the most. And like, that makes me almost like not want to do it. Like, because dude, like, I grew up in like DIY, like, yeah. and I still play like DIY shows where mm -hmm. like, I don't want to fucking play it. Like, sure, I want to play an arena one day. Like, I'd play at Red Rocks or fucking the Staples Center. But, like, dude, I want to play, like, 350, 350, like, a 1,000 cap room tops where, like, people are, like, on the floor together. You know, like, where people get intimate and into it and fucking, you know, it's like, and I don't know if I could fucking play music in a world where it's not like that. Maybe like, you know, I'll have to adjust to that, but I don't know, man, maybe we will get to that again one day, but people need to, I think even if the virus does start, when the numbers finally start to go down, I do have a fear that people are going to be scared of large gatherings. Uh, I, don't so, man. I don't think they're going to be yeah, scared. I, mean, I, think I think people are going to, be it's going to be like walking through a desert and coming to a big oasis of water and just people are just going to be I, in it. I, I hope so, man. It's just, I know people have had the shit and they say like, yeah. I don't know, like 
they don't feel the the same and like i don't yeah. you know as they did before like you know like this girl i know like she said that like she was running like four miles every day and then like her just like walking on a treadmill is like drains her yeah she like so i i don't know dude like I'm not being a COVID dummy, like going around like it's not existing, like fucking assholes. Right. Right. But I'm also not being super afraid of it either. Like you know, I gotta go on with life, you know. Like, but I'm not like I'm not mask going up. out there. Yeah, mask up, keep your fucking <laughs> hands clean. It's just like I don't get sick on tour. That's why I didn't get sick on tour with what I fucking met and came into contact That's with, like <laughs> hundreds That's of people. Feet. Hundreds. Don't get not getting plague on tour, I, I, dude. I slept in. <laughs> So many different beds, a bunch of different floors, yeah. a bunch of different couches. God knows what was going on in anybody's houses. Like, <laughs> and like, dude, and like, I didn't get sick once. You know why? I didn't shake anyone's hand. I only gave fucking right. bumps. Right. That goes a long way. You know? You know what else goes a long way? I'm super serious. I know this sounds kind of crude, but like, like the thing that I, I, I read that article, I was like, wait, just don't go inside for a long period of time. If you go inside, make sure you're wearing a mask. Like literally, that's the rule that I follow. I don't go inside other people's houses. I don't let my kids go inside other people's houses. If I go to the supermarket, I try to be in there under an hour because the longer you breathe that shit, oh, the yeah. more likely you're going to friggin' infect yourself. It's that exactly. simple. Yeah. <laughs> it's like literally that simple, you know? Yeah, dude. But, you know, the problem with the American, with the, the American people is that we want everything now. And we, if we can't yeah. have it our way now, then fuck the government. And it's just like, even yeah. if it means people are going to fucking die for it too. You know, it's just okay, like, Nana said, my, I was talking to my Nana about world war two. Cause I'm like, Nana, dude, world war two was like crazy. Like, how did you live through that shit? She's like, Oh, it wasn't, it was pretty easy actually, you know, cause if everything was happening in Europe, you know, it's on the other side of the world, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, Nana, do you think cause she's my Nana is like COVID is the hardest thing I've ever lived through. I'm like, Nana, you were born the fucking year of the beginning of the great depression or Black Friday or Black Monday or whatever. You you were born when the stock market friggin' fell out. You you saw the Great Depression. You saw World War II. You're telling me that COVID is the worst thing uh, that you've witnessed? She's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, I was thinking in my head, I'm like, could you imagine people today having to do all the shit that they did in World War II, like rationing gas, rationing meat, no. shit, like all that no. shit? They wouldn't no. do it. They'd be like, fuck you. We have it pretty. We have it pretty fucking. Besides, no, dude, besides what's going on right now, yeah, we have it pretty fucking rad, dude. Like yeah. that's the thing. Like <laughs> we have, dude. The internet is like for better for worse. We have Spotify. What? Yeah, for better for. Yeah, no, we have Spotify. We have fucking. We have Alexas. We have fucking Netflix. We got. I don't know. I don't know, dude. Like so much shit. Like you know, at the at the instant gratification, instant yeah. gratification. Yeah, we have instant. So gratification. like, right, I, right. And I think that's where that's why COVID is so bad for Americans. It like it doesn't allow us to have the instant gratification. Right. Which is why wow. we are moving fucking backwards. And we are. Like, we are. <laughs> it, just, it pisses me off, man. Because the more idiots that I fucking see having. Like illegal gatherings, if it's a fucking warehouse party or whatever the fuck it is, you know, it's just like that's yeah. just putting that's just put, sorry, I need to stand up, dude. That's okay. This is just yeah. like this is just putting people like me like more setbacks and like giving us more right. of a setback. And like, I don't fucking want that, dude. I, I've you've probably seen me rant about it online. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram or anything, but like it wasn't uh, until it wasn't well, whatever, it wasn't until this that like I realized how much playing gigs like whether if they were big gigs or small gigs but just being you know a dude who was playing at least a minimum of a sh one show at least once a week you know anywhere between you know two three or being on tours blah blah, blah I didn't realize how much that shaped me as a human being mm -hmm. and uh not not even necessarily obviously it's always been a part of my character but like as a human and yeah. like how I move on with my life like dude I've put on like fucking almost 10 pounds like, I didn't realize how active I was. Like, it generally – and, like, dude, for, like, the first six months, I was like, okay, you know, this is kind of a nice break. You know, right. I, I, I kind of need – and then, like, these last two months, man, I have, like – I generally, if I'm being real here, I generally have not been this depressed since I was, like, I don't know, ever, I think. Because it's just, like, dude, like, 
the one thing that like made me interesting is like I can't do right now. And I don't know when I'm going to be able to do it again. And that's the worst part. I almost wish like some golden god from like the future could come and be like, yo, don't worry, it's gonna come back, but it's gonna be like this amount of time. Or someone you could get are, like you are that golden god. You just haven't gotten there yet. That's the funniest part, is that you are gonna have that information. You just don't you're just living in complete uncertainty. You know? I know, but I, I hate that, you know, it just yeah. it, it sucks too. And like and then alternatively, I almost wish, you know, that other golden god would come and say, like, yo, bro, it ain't happening ever again. Figure out something else. Figure out something you else. Know? And like because it's just like, dude, it's like I don't know what to do. And it, it makes me sad. And uh I don't know. I'd be crying about it right now if I wasn't like so bubbly about, you know, bullshit you know, about from bullshitting with you this past hour and a half, you know, but like you know, I'm not gonna lie, like I've I've cried about it a bunch and like it sucks because like I'm I haven't been much of a crier these last few years until like recently, you know, just like you don't know something, you know how you don't know how happy something makes you until it's completely fucking stripped right. away from you. You know? And that goes about anything and you know, I yeah. growing up, music has always been right there for me. And right. you know, sure it's right there for me. I got my drums in my garage and I got my homies to jam with, but like dude there's nothing like fucking going to a live gig or even fucking playing one man. It's like totally. It's, it's, the dude, it's audience. There's man. nothing. There's nothing else like it. It's its own yeah. energy for sure. That's what I hear. You know, I've not. I've not had that experience, but I've had. You know, I know what. I know. You know, I know what it is to get high. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, yeah, you could. You could feel it. Yeah, that's another yeah. thing too, man. Like, I don't fucking have my joint on me. Yeah, fucking thanks to. Thanks to COVID, you know, I've taken up fucking weed like a fucking dumbass, and like yeah. I can't fall asleep without getting stoned these days, which sucks. But uh, it's fine because you know, you know, I want. You know, I, this too shall pass. No, this I know. You smoke pass. weed? You smoke weed? I'm actually sober, man. I'm oh, okay. Sober too. Um, I and you know, I gotta tell you. I hope I you didn't know. take. I hope you didn't take that that seriously uh, as a because I yeah. said like Aiden's oh not God, sober. No. Like no, Jake no. is Jake is sober because like he had a problem. I was like Jake, I was like Aiden's sober because he's a bitch. I, I mean that I was kidding. Like, yeah. but he is a, he is a fucking bitch, and not because. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, he's not gonna fucking watch this anyway. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't he's like Aiden like here since I hear since I know Aiden's not gonna watch this because like you know Aiden in this case Allison Chain sucks uh fucking let's see what else uh what else does he like uh Jerry Cantrell sucks uh, I don't know the guy from Allison Chains he's yeah he's he's the yeah. guitar player yeah he was supposed to do something with dancing a long time ago um. Yeah, no, I saw that documentary. I saw the Long Way Back documentary that uh, Z-Man did and yada, yada, yada. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that's awesome, man. I Listen, it's hard to be young. I got sober at a very young age. I got sober at 16. Oh, wow, yeah, you're very, very young. very hard to stay sober at a young age. And, oh, dude, I've totally. Been, I've been through the whole gambit of, like, you know, people being like, just whatever, like the, the, the perception of someone who was sober. And I've met a lot of different people type of sober people there's yeah. lots of varieties of sober people i'm not oh, a sober yeah. guy, but you know there's just a lot of yeah this way there's a, i i you know i've been to a lot of i go to a lot of coffee club meetings and so yeah, of course. there are a lot of uh <laughs> it's very interesting no my um, dad's sober too and like you know okay, so there there's, you a, re there's a right. reason why he stopped going to meetings you know like oh, okay. you know it's just like he's just said there's a lot of dudes who are like very uh you know I my dad we have we we do we have a whole Zoom scene now. It's kind yeah, of yeah. I know. My dad is like one of the most humble guys uh, yeah. when it comes to being specifically. I mean, he he could be full of himself sometimes, but about healthy yeah. things. But he is very 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 humble about his sober lifestyle. Like you know, yeah. there's these sober guys who love to fucking flaunt it like they're these fucking. These, yeah. you know, these, yeah, like there's a God's gift to I the would, earth. I honestly wouldn't have even said that had you not asked me. I would have just not even. <laughs> no, exactly, dude. Like, you don't, you, here's the thing. You don't use it as a personality trait and neither does my dad. And then there's a lot of fucking sober people who do. And, uh, yeah, and there's a lot that I can fucking think of off the top of my head. And, yeah. uh. Because you want to know, here's what you have to understand though. This is what happens. 
it's for some people. I, I can't speak for anybody but myself, really. But it's like your identity is this thing. And then all of a sudden you get sober. And who are you? Yeah. You don't know who you are. And like for me, I had to find passion. I found passion in life. And that was like the thing. I was like, I want to tell stories. I want to be a movie maker. I want to be a filmmaker. And that was the thing that replaced that. And I found passion in all sorts of things. I became yeah. fanatical about music and about movies and about like create right now, like for me in this pandemic thing, like I've just been the thing that I'm addicted to right now, besides eating food, food is my <laughs> biggest addiction ever right now um, is uh freaking creating content. And like for my YouTube channel, because I yeah. got unemployed and I want to like, you know, get monetize my channel, <laughs> like my channel's right. monetized. Like yeah. wanting to like put out so much content, just sheer quantity of content that there's so much that like I don't have to go back to a a nine to five job, which I'm gonna have to do because I have yeah. a family. I can't yeah. be dad. Yeah, you know. But well, and um, here's the thing: there's your high doing all those things that you just mentioned. You know? Exactly, dude. Yeah. And I found that, and I found my identity. My identity, besides, as a matter of fact. The only time I revealed my, myself that I'm a sober person is when there's someone else who's struggling to get sober. And then I say, hey, I'm sober. Yeah. I, you know, this is why I'm sober. You know, I mean, it's kind of weird to say, actually, but like in a way, Sublime kind of had like a huge part of that for me because that story was like a crazy story to me. That like yeah. kept yeah. me straight for so long. So it's like, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's not something, you know what it is? Here's the other thing, too, about the anonymity thing. Once you, I learned this the hard way. Once you, once you reveal what you are, you can't put it back in the bottle. And so I keep it, it's guard, it's close to the chest. It's just for me. It's a very personal thing. That's good. That's good. It's how it should be. I feel like. Yeah, it is. It's like, I don't, yeah. well, you know, and, but here's the craziest part. You go to a party and you're not drinking a beer. And then you got somebody in your face being like, why don't you drink? I'm like, I just don't drink. What's the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why do you got a bot? Like, yo, like I got my bubbly seltzer. Like, what do you care? Yeah, exactly. It's you like, like, it's like you, you don't care? drink. That's weird. It's like, no, dude, you made it weird. Like, you know, it's yeah, like, you know what I, do? I just like, you know, I figured out a long time ago. Oh, just hold on to it. Because if you don't, you could t pick up the wrong one. Just put fucking seltzer or something in a solo cup. No one's going to yeah, ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's going to ask shit. Yeah. No ask you I, and I find myself doing that sometimes too. If I'm at a party, yeah, I don't really like drink so it. So, you know, as long as you have some, like, as long as you have some, cause I, I don't want to say like I'm a, an alcoholic or anything, but like, let's just say I'm usually the kind of guy where if it's around, like, sure, I'll fucking have a beer or something. But like, I, I do, I feel like at some point I do want to get to the point in my life where I don't need it because like, it ultimately doesn't really lead to me feeling good. Cause I got a lot of issues with my stomach and, you know, and like about meat. Yeah. Yeah, see, so, same with that someday, too. Hope someday I could be like a not, not like a vet, not like a vegan or a, maybe like a pescatarian, but like I'm like I'm like fuck, I got so much like ethical and health reasons why I don't want to eat meat, but I grew up eating meat, so I'm like I can't stop, but same. like I don't want to like I really don't want to eat it anymore, you know? No, I, I feel you, dog. I, I feel you on that. Yeah, yeah. But um, listen, uh, let me let me let you go. This was this was oh, so, yeah. so 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 much fun to talk with you. Um, when I do, when I need repeat guests, I may uh, I may hit you up again. Talk more music and stuff. Oh yeah, dude, and uh, we can be more. I guess uh, uh, let we'll be less angular next time too, if you want. But like this was fun. Okay. This was just like this is kind of exactly what I wanted. You know, just a nice, okay. fun conversation that was all over the place. You know. And uh, it was completely fun. I hope something, I hope people find, I hope there's a few people who find this somewhat interesting and, you know, like not, not your thing, my thing, you know, like, oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I think, listen, I think people, I mean, you have a very interesting, it's a very interesting story and it's like super cool. And again, I can't even imagine, I mean, I, I think about the, how big of a sublime fan that I personally am. And I can't imagine like even being like, you know, whatever level of sublime fan one would be to like, find yourself in that position or to be a fan of the Stooges. And here you are fucking playing with Mike Watt. Yeah. I mean, he's my, he's my dude. He's my oh dude. My God. And he was, he was doing Stooges gigs at that same time. Like yeah. he was in the Stooges. So you're mm -hmm. playing with a guy who's playing in the Stooges. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. It's what pretty a wild. Experience. I mean, here's the thing, man, me playing with him 
is probably just as wild, if not even more wild for him, for like, you know, him playing for the Stooges. Like, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. He, he, he was, uh, he revered the Stooges. And I, I don't remember where I saw him. There were some letters that he wrote to D. Boone, like who had already passed, where he's talking about how crazy it is that he's playing for the Stooges and like, you know, just uh, just sort of like how he's doing it for both of them or something, and yeah, you know, yeah, uh, very touching sort of, um, very touching sort of thing. So that's pretty, yeah. that's pretty, that's pretty trippy, man. So, okay. so good for you, yeah. and I can't wait to hear new music. And uh, uh, that's all you get today for Pizza Punk. Uh, like, subscribe, share, all that YouTube stuff you got to do. If you like this content, we got more content coming out. Uh, check out Nick's bands. You got Law. We talked about Law. There's was it Slaughter? What's the? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What was the name of the other band? Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse, which doesn't and, uh, have stuff out yet, but and, like, and Neighborhood Brats has some stuff up on Bandcamp too. There you go. And, uh, yeah, it's in the in the thing in the thing of the thing. Uh, peace and hair grease.